how's it going guys welcome to audio addiction we have everline i totally did not butcher that before we hopped on just moments ago but she could say her name and what she does in the band hi uh my name's mac um and i'm the lead singer for everline all right well thank you mac i appreciate it this is going to be so weird calling you mac i just think that's uh <laughs> no offense to you i just like my brain i'm already having enough time trouble pronouncing your band name now i gotta remember mac there's a lot of moving parts up in my brain right now, but I um, want to give a huge shout out to Ophelia. Uh, again, another frustrating episode of Ophelia time because I, again, another band where I was like, how did I not get this band on sooner? I'm a little disappointed by, you know, the promptness of having just insanely talented Australian bands on the show. Um, so I'm just, I'm just mad. Like, what do you, I, I this is a serious question like why what do you guys eat there like what do you feed yourselves in order to like create like the finest music I it makes me mad that like obviously I love all music but I just feel like Australia is just like there's just something special about what you guys write and it makes me very Probably about frustrated. the kangaroo steaks the kangaroo steaks <laughs> oh my god I well, wish I was probably joking, true. but we actually have kangaroo steaks that get sold in our local shopping centers. <laughs> you can just go into like your local, um, I think your equivalent would probably be like a Walmart and just get what? kangaroo steaks, kangaroo meatballs, all of the above. All right. Well, if I ever travel to Australia, which is definitely on my bucket list of things to do, um, Mac and I are definitely going to have an, a kangaroo steak. I was yeah, going to call it an Australian steak just by pure coincidence, <laughs> but... I feel like that would fly pretty well. So I don't know. We're going to, I'm going to just mentally call it Australian steak and people are going to be like, what are you talking? Is this, this American man, this dumb American, <laughs> what is he doing? So, um, but anyway, Mac, I do appreciate you coming on. I, I did have a chance to listen to your entire discography. So, but I'll also leave a link to your YouTube channel. Go subscribe because they're only at a hundred subs and I would be really thrilled if you like brought that number up because then I feel like I've done my job. If not, then I feel like Ophelia is going to take the first flight to America and come find me. And I don't want that. So please, <laughs> I'd like to protect my life. No, I'm kidding. Ophelia is definitely not going to do that, but I would like to like to start the internet beef now. Um, but anyway, Mac, I wanted to know, I am a nerd about most things, but music is also one of those things on my list. I wanted to know how Everline started out. How'd you get your members? The whole nine yards. I spare no expense. I need to know the details. You know, give me the, give me the tea. Yeah, well, it's actually a bit of a cute story, to be perfectly honest. Um, so our bass player and guitarist, Nathan and Jordan, they're actually brothers. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so um, obviously they've known each other for quite a while. I don't, I don't think um, so. Very excited on that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think their mom like introduced them at some point in their lives. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so they were in a, a band quite a few years ago that was like before Everline. It was called Above All. Okay. And they competed in a battle of the bands probably like twenty seventeen. I want to say it was. And I was competing with my high school band at the time against them. So, yeah. <laughs> Rival squad. All right. I get yeah, it. Yeah. I competed against them in a battle of the bands and they ended up winning. So they invited Nathan, the guitarist, to come back the following year to judge. And I competed again. And unfortunately, their previous band fell apart. So they approached me after the competition and he's like, hey, we're setting up a new project. Do you want to jump on? And um, I came in to audition for the band <laughs> in quotation marks. Um, <laughs> but after the first first rehearsal, they're like, yeah, cool, you're in the band. I was like, yeah, it's a great audition, guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you don't sound too then, sold on that, honestly. You're just like, <laughs> it was like, this is all pageantry and I'm not for it. Yeah, yeah, not about the pageantry. <laughs> That's fair. I, I get um, it. Yeah. And then Sam was actually a friend of mine. From uni, we both studied together at uni. We both have a degree in music. So oh, nice. that's okay. how we met there. There we go. And you guys all became a family. Some sure actually did. actual family and some yeah. band family. So 100% we did. That's that's awesome. And obviously now you put out a new song, The In Between. I'll leave a link down in the description. Go Go check that out. 
get absolutely eviscerated by that song because I put it on and that was the first song I listened to. I went back in time, so I had listened to the newest stuff and then just went all the way back in their catalog and watched all of their music videos. So they got all the watch time from YouTube. So that's going to make them a whole five, whatever, five cents equivalent to in Australia, which is probably a lot less. So because Australian (laughs) to American rate, not good. So, but uh, I really enjoyed kind of interesting an interesting perspective on like listening to the newest stuff and going to back in time because I think it gives me a better perspective on where you come from as musicians and how much you guys have like simultaneously evolved over each like iteration of the music video. Um, not to kind of lessen the value of the first music video, but it's like, this is solid. I like it. And then I got to deranged and I was like, okay, getting better. This one is like heavier definitely more about it and then i got to i swear i was like okay something's in the water here and then i got to the in between and i was like i literally no joke i took my headphones off and i sat here for like a minute and i was just like what the fuck did i just listen to like i was like this is so this is so wildly good and the fact that people have not checked this band out just it just I, I could feel like a pit in my chest so i feel like i am doing a service that you should go check this band out especially the in between that song was wildly good and the feature i f- completely forget because i'm getting old and i forget shit but was also awesome i'm not going to spoil it because i feel like you got to experience it in the moment but it was it was pretty fire if you ask me so um but i I really enjoyed kind of your catalog and I was telling Mac, I enjoyed the in between and Derange are my two favorite songs that I listen to. Do you happen to have a song that you would recommend to a new listener that maybe is tuning in on this interview? And it's like, I, I like this chick. She's cool. Uh, who, what song would I, what song would you give out to a new listener to be like, this is our sound. This is what we do. Ah, well, I think you pretty pretty much hit the nail on the head. Like my favorites are also deranged in the in between. So <laughs> let's go. Absolutely, absolutely hit that one. Um, yeah, obviously the in between is the newest one. So we're trying to switch direction. As you've probably noticed with our catalog, I did. Yeah, we've kind of tried a few different a few different pathways. Um, <laughs> it kind of jumps around a little bit, but I think we've pretty solidly landed on something that we're happy with with the in between. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like Deranged. I feel like that's probably our second strongest song as well. Yeah, you really popped off on that song. I gotta say, I'm, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna riz Matt Mac up right now. I'm just gonna tell you that she's got powerhouse vocals, like un- unreal. So if unreal i legitimately was just like i can't i can't like as someone who is trying to like learn how to sing well i just was like i should just stop doing this like i there's i'm like she's already beat me to it so i feel like i gotta what else do i have to you know what else do i have to say or do you know i'm just like it's cool don't you dare give up that's not (laughs) what we're here to do (laughs) I'm not here to show you up. That's not what I'm trying to do. Well, you sure did. So I <laughs> I felt like absolute shit after I finished going through your catalog. So not to say it's bad. You know, it's well. actually very good. But I vocally, I'm like, man, it, I'm, I'm wondering when you said you were like, oh, I went to uni for music. I was like, OK, that checks out now because like you seem like you've been really honing in on your vocal craft for a long time. So. Maybe I feel a little less bad about myself since I was like seven. <laughs> so okay, so you yeah. got a couple. You got a couple years ahead of me. Yeah, you know? yeah, about fifteen years <laughs> training to be a singer. So you know, <laughs> just a little, just a smidge. Just a little, little um, no, I, and like I said, I just think that just going from oh my own, I own my own. I don't even know why I messed that up because I can't read apparently. Um, but I. <laughs> really kind of enjoy just how vocally you have changed and how like more dynamic I think the songs have become as well too um that was a cool kind of differentiator that I felt like between each music video that I saw is like you can tell with the most current song like the production on it is just at a higher level so I think there was some things that maybe I missed out on some of the earlier songs that I would have wished 
would have been in like more of the newer production style um because i think there's a lot more like dynamics there's a lot more like electronics things going on in the song that i think aid in the overall like enjoyability of it that i feel like maybe some of the older songs would would care to you know have a little bit you know a little extra on there you know um so i think for me i would probably listen to the more current releases and that's not to discount their old discography but i i I find that like the best representation is the new song and everybody you know believes in the trope of like or for our newest songs, the best song we've written, and then they're gonna release another song and be like, "This is the best song we've written re- <laughs> released." And it's just a, it's an endless cycle. But I, I would, I would care to assume that, you know, this band is definitely just increasingly getting better with each release. So I can say, I can say that as someone who has went through their entire discography. Oh, I really appreciate that. Obviously, like we first started out. It was our first real time, like doing music videos sure, and yeah. actually working with everything. So we had no idea what we were doing. We got to the shoot the day of the first music video for I Own My Own. And uh, our videographer is like, so what do you want to do for it? And we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> you, you tell us what to do. <laughs> I just thought it was the first set was show up and then you just shoot it. You would know what to do. Yeah, you were right? like a videographer, right? <laughs> Aren't you meant to be the ideas, man? We're just the band. Like, <laughs> we're just, just here. We're just, yeah, we're just <laughs> act, paid actors. Come on, just let us, you know, we make the music. I'm not supposed to shoot the music video, too. Am I supposed to come out with the concept <laughs> for it? We're that not actually great. paid actors. We paid him to. <laughs> <laughs> we actually lost money that day. It's just a real sad moment in our musical career, you know? Oh, boy. Well. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> even more of a reason to check out all of the music videos is because they spent a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort putting them together. So do it and tell them I sent you because that would be really cool. Um, but I feel like some of the bands that at least I kind of correlated your music to and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. I feel like I'm I, I feel like I got kind of a, a good idea, but I would say um, bands that I feel like I relate you to is Rivals. They're really sick if you have not checked them out. Um, I feel like Conquer Divide, if you've also not heard of them, I feel like you kind of have a Conquer Divide sound. And then one of my favorite bands, Shouts to Skaggs, um, Outline and Color, you kind of got a little bit of like that like electronic. They kind of do a lot of like post-hardcore metalcore crossover sort of stuff. And I would say an honorable mention for the in between and just exclusively that song. I feel like you pull a little bit from North lane, like in terms of like ah. electronics and like the vibe. I was like, okay, I, I, I see what everyone's doing. You know, I'm picking <laughs> up what you're putting down. So you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. If I'm close, it, I'm curious what you guys get compared to, because I, that's who I thought. So <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest. Those first three bands, Never, Never heard, heard of them. Heard of them okay, now you're gonna have to check them out. Yeah, I have to send me the link to them because I'm gonna have to check them out. Okay. Um, but North Lane, funnily enough, our drummer Sam is obsessed with North Lane, and he actually works as like a full time lighting technician. And I'm pretty sure he's done lights for North Lane when they've been touring around Australia as well. Oh, very sick. So Marcus, he come very on the much show. takes a lot of influence from North Lane. I would love to have Marcus on the show. This is gonna be my pitch to Marcus. <laughs> Can you please come on the show? I loved your previous band sound of seasons i don't know no one in america probably knows that band name but i do because i've always loved australian bands so that was his previous band before he joined north lane so the more you know and that's where i'm gonna put the the stupid meme thing right now totally not gonna if i don't do it then it's gonna look really dumb if i just leave this in and i'm just talking now and i didn't put the meme in (laughs) probably what's gonna happen because i'm gonna forget but it's okay we're we digress but yeah i i think that i'm curious who so you said who do you guys get kind of referenced to well it's it's always difficult because being a female fronted band it's always one of two oh that i, I, I know what it is. i know it's coming yeah right oh, and there's boy. also another one that gets thrown in there which i'm very honored about because they're one of my favorite bands okay. um I love I love these other two bands as well, by the way. So I always either get compared to Haley Williams, Paramore, <laughs> or Amy Lee from Evanescence. Oh, okay. I was and gonna say what I love them, but 
It's always those two. I had a strong suspicion it was those two. And not that I don't think that you have some similar vocal qualities to that. I just don't think you was like, I just think that that is like the worst trope you can associate to a female fronted group. <laughs> it's just, all, but every female artist gets compared to those two because they're the only ones that people really know. And that's fair. I mean, fair assessment. Like if you're not in, if you're not in the know, like I get it. But, like, if you're in the scene and you know other female-fronted groups or just, like, females that are in the scene, like, why would you pick these two people? Like, not no <laughs> offense, but, like, I that that irks me. That is, like, one of my biggest pet peeves. And, like, again, if you are in the pop-punk scene of music and you make similar music to As Paramore, then I'm like, okay— you're really just not helping out in that cause. And that's like totally fine, whatever, do what you want. You know, I respect your vision. Um, but if you are like, for the example of Mac, she's not even remotely close. Like maybe even, I would say maybe Evanescence if I'm like really like giving you're it, reaching. if I'm really reaching. Yeah. But like, no, don't. No. <laughs> well, the other one is Lizzie Hale, which I do take a little bit of inspiration okay. from as well. I could see from that. Hailstorm. I adore her. I actually got to um, host an interview over COVID with her brother, RJ Hale, who is the coolest dude. <laughs> That's amazing. He I could see that. I could, I could see that. I could see that. If, like that, And that would, again, make more sense. But just like PSA, just don't do it. It's just not. <laughs> Thumbs down. Not good. You know, just... Be like, or at least, at the very least, is broaden your horizons. There's other artists that are not Amy, Amy Lee or Haley Williams, and that's me being a Haley Williams stan. I will die on that rock. She's my wife, you know, so I get it. <laughs> you know, I get it. Respect. But, like, no, don't do it. Especially if they're not even close to a genre. Like, just not even close. Don't do it. I yeah, feel like I, I feel like Mac would respect you so much more if you just like bottled up all of those urges to say you sound like X Y Z band here or like artist female artist, and if you're like wow you sound like this band they're gonna be like mind blown that you know more I, than two groups. Yeah, I did actually get an interesting one a couple of weeks ago. Someone told me I sound like I can't remember her name, but she, I think her name's Lacey from Flyleaf. Oh yeah, Lacey, you're right. Yeah, that was a different one. I was like, I like that. That's I, that's a bit left of field, but that's pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if I could sign off on that one, but <laughs> I don't hear it. But that's I cool. don't. I, <laughs> yeah, you again with the Amy Lee thing. I think you're really stretching it, you know. But hey, respect. You know, if you're gonna do it, at least it wasn't those two names. So I'll I'll take it, but. Uh, the next question I have for you, Mac, is um, who was like the first artist or group that you saw on like TV or on like YouTube online, something like that, that really inspired you to get into music? Because I think oftentimes we think about like influences, which I'll certainly ask you about later on. But, you know, who was kind of the first artist that you saw and just kind of like just drive that itch to be like a musician? That's a very interesting question because it wasn't actually someone on TV. It, like, my parents are both musicians. Oh, so, very nice. Okay. That's, yeah. like, that's cool. Yeah. So I grew up with musician parents. Like, my dad's a drummer and has been performing since before I was born. So I think um, just seeing them perform at gigs and just all over the place, that kind of was my main influence for getting into music. Um, but I think... Uh, when I was in high school, I really got into Hailstorm and Nightwish. Oh, um, yeah, Nightwish. Shout out. And love those guys so much. Um, and I saw them on YouTube because obviously you're growing up with like um, with Evanescence and Paramore and all that sort oh, of yeah. stuff. I was like really little and I just knew those songs because that's just what my parents played in the car. So when I first really discovered like Hailstorm and Nightwish, I was probably about 13, 14. I was like, Mm, yeah i really really want to get into music <laughs> that's awesome and were your parents how how were your parents in regards to i feel like did they did they know you wanted to get into music like could they already tell they were like 
she's she's gonna be a yeah. musician <laughs> yeah well like I said I've been training to be a singer since I was like six or seven years old I was a part of what's called the Australian Girls Choir um, which is like this really prestigious um, girls choir in Australia for people usually between the ages of like six and 18 hmm. um, and so I was a part of that for a couple of years and then I kind of grew out of being a, a choir girl <laughs> that's wasn't <fair>. really my <laughs> style <laughs> I couldn't tell yeah that, oh, no not at all <laughs> <laughs> no it's it, and it's cool that because as someone who didn't grow up with musical parents but now is obviously like just been invested in the scene and like the different types of music that I wind up listening to I always find it interesting when like I have artists on that they're like, yeah, I grew up with musical parents and like I would hear music at all hours of the night and day and all that sort of stuff. And it was really like ingrained into my like just bonked on the head of music, <laughs> you know, like and I think that's cool because I think if I was in that position, I'd almost feel like it'd be like I wouldn't even want to do music because it would be so like just all the time as a constant, you know, so it's good that you took the positive aspect from it. I think it would also be cool if I could like reel back the, the hands of time and could be a part of a music family. That'd be really cool. I think I'd probably be a little bit more talented than where I'm at now. So um, still hope for me to do that, maybe possibly at some point, but um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love that, um, you know, is is the other parts of your family like also musical as well, too? Like is your whole like group or is it just mainly your like internal family? No, it's mainly just my internal family. Like my, I think grandparents can hold a tune, may not be the most <laughs> pleasant thing to hear, but, um, but none of them are overly like musically driven. Um, my mum's always been big into like musical theatre, so I grew up uh... with that um, that sort of influence as well. And they, my parents were actually in a theatre company while I was growing up. So I grew up with wow. all of those really, like, eccentric personalities, which was really cool. They're like, yeah, <laughs> I got you, yeah. Yeah, I had such a cool childhood looking back on it. That's, yeah, that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty rad, you know. I, I do really enjoy that. And obviously I think it, you know, bodes well into the type of music you write too because I think it's very, like, I don't want to say eccentric because I, I guess it would be considered a negative term, but I do feel like there is this like level of like just grandioseness that as I was listening to the music, I was like, if she's not inspired like a little bit by theater, I'd be very surprised because it kind yeah. of does has that like that like flow that like especially more of like the belting and kind of like the larger like big notes. I was like, yeah, she's definitely like trained in some way like my mm -hmm. my brain was like oh definitely trained definitely went to like music school and uni something like that like my <laughs> all the all the buzzers are going off in my head where I was like that's got to be the case if not then I just need to stop trying <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> some people have the talent and it makes me like it makes me kind of question myself but at the same point I think it just it, it, it strives to make me that much better of like trying to become a better musician like i feel like if i interview people enough that like i'm gonna get bullied enough to just be like you just got to do it like you gotta keep yeah. punching at the metaphorical like wall to keep going. <laughs> so thanks for yeah, giving I me the passion you... to do it <laughs> <laughs> i don't even think you needed me here you've already got me figured out I listen I that's what a lot of people say when I have them on for interviews so maybe I'm miss my calling of being like a psychologist or something at this point so <laughs> too late now I you know, music went to... psychology is a thing thanks i'm gonna throw away eight years <laughs> of my life now <laughs> sorry that's all right no offense to the people who did music psychology i want to say preface that you you're doing wonderful work but god man if i had to go back to school again i would not be a happy nah. camper <laughs> so couldn't do it couldn't do it but the next question i have for you mac is the pretty obvious one in the next chain of questions who are you influenced by? I feel like you kind of talked a little bit briefly on who you were influenced by, but if you could also speak about the band as a whole too, um, who, who are you guys influenced by? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, I was very heavily influenced by my parents a lot growing up, which is really cool. Um, 
coming from like both a musical theater background and as well as like my dad was always very into like 70s 80s rock and metal oh yeah um yeah like my dad's in like a kiss tribute show oh, like, sick. That's yeah the kind, yeah <laughs> that's the kind of All stuff right. that i grew up around your dad's so, cool shout out to max dad <laughs> So um, I'm very heavily influenced by a whole bunch of things. Like obviously the the heavyweights I mentioned before, like Paramore and Evanescence, Hailstorm, Nightwish, all of those sort of guys kind of play into it. Um, but I adored people like Julie Andrews growing up. Ooh, I, wow. Oh, okay. I absolutely loved her. I had seen like all of her musicals. I just... She, that's so weird, right? <laughs> it's a great pick though. But yeah, she's, she was just incredible. And I, I loved her from like the age of two or three years old. I thought she was the greatest. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, more of the band, I think Sam's very, like I mentioned, very heavily influenced by bands like North Lane. He's a very highly trained drummer as well. So we both have our music degrees um he does he does a little bit of everything from like jazz and a bit of swing and he does like obviously like the heavier stuff that we do um <laughs> as well as like just your basic rock beats for for friends through through their uni stuff so um yeah very talented drummer so we got super lucky when he decided to join the project um I think the brothers have very very similar influences like they listen to like a lot of Bring Me the Horizon. Um, I think Jordan's more heavily influenced by like a lot of prog metal. Ooh, yeah. So he's okay. big into bands like Dream Theater. Um, yeah. Man of culture. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's one of my dad's favorite bands. So I also grew up with Dream Theater, which wow. is pretty cool. <laughs> you are, you, your dad's so cool. Can you, Max, dad, can you adopt me? I've been adopted once. So you can, if you... Why not twice? That'd be sick. No offense <laughs> to my parents. To <laughs> so I'm sure he'd love to have a son. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Sign me up. But yeah, um, I think collectively we, it's really hard to pick because we've got so many different sort of influences that we draw from that I think I really couldn't pick one that we, like, we all would be along the same lines of. It's really difficult. Which is good, I think, because I do feel like just going through your catalog of music, it's I think it's really hard to kind of pinpoint where you guys land. And I think I genuinely had a hard time kind of like seeing like, OK, what is like what is, who is she pulling from? Like, what are they pulling from collectively? And I think there is just like uh, like a very hodgepodge of different things. Like there's some progressive metalcore music in here. There's some like cool electronic stuff. There's some like gent stuff in here. There's like theater. There's like, like pop rock people there, whatever. Like, I think there's just kind of a nice mix of everything. And I think what come, what ends up being the final product, um, I do think is kind of a good representation of the band as a whole, because I don't think there's one particular thing that you guys swing to versus another thing and just kind of going through each song i think that's pretty clearly evident especially if you're going from new song to old song you can tell where i would say there's a shift i'm not going to say where exactly but i do feel like there's kind of like a musical shift in direction that i would ultimately would say what lines you up to the in between uh and you're like okay i get it now you know, I think if you just listen to the in between, you may like be like, "Oh, this is really cool. I really like this." But I think it gives you a little bit better of a perspective if you go back and listen to the other stuff, because then you're like, "Wow, this is this first song is wildly different from the newest song, but it's still <laughs> right? good." You know, and so I think it's it's a mark of progression, and I think that's what I like to see in artists is just being able to like willfully take on the challenge of what the next thing is going to be, and I think with each song especially the newest one i think you guys take on some unique challenges that again i think for me you've garnered a new fan clearly so i you know i'm excited to i'm excited to hear new stuff and if you want to listen to everline stuff i mean you know you could check the links in the description i'm gonna say it like 20 more times so this is the first time 
and you get 20 more chances and then the video closes out and then you i disappear for forever actually don't i don't disappear so you should you know the next video that comes out you know check that one out too um but yeah i really like it mac and i think again collectively as a whole guys are a full unit so super sick love it um but what are you listening to more currently what's on the spotify what are you jamming more recently oh um so this is <laughs> um probably another weird left turn let's go i'm ready um, <laughs> i'm ready to take all the turns so um i've been kind of getting into like the league of legends soundtracks <laughs> And so I've been listening to like a lot of um, the KDA songs that they've done for League of Legends, which I absolutely love. And I kind of, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, how can I incorporate this sort of stuff into our music? Because I really like what they do. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe to say whenever I'm playing my music in the car, people get whiplash because it just goes from like Disney to Nightwish and then you've got KDA and then there's Taylor Swift and they're like, what is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is happening in that part? <laughs> what are we listening to today? You know, <laughs> everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I love that. So just KDA is uh, that's what we're, we're on. That's what we're about. Yeah, I just I keep every time I put my playlist on, that's like the first thing that I listen to. <laughs> I love that. That's what a goaded answer that was so tight it's so fun they're so hype i love it i feel that that's like me right now with like shout outs to my roommate alex he's been really getting me into k-pop music bro that shit's wild i love it how fun is it though oh it's great i i literally said that the new new jeans album get up their ep chef's kiss i mean talk <laughs> about an album i can listen to all the time and i have listened to all the time that is like most assuredly going to be my ep of the year 100 percent. so go listen to some k-pop music it's great i've been doing a lot of stuff on k-pop here so check it out we've got some good ones great gym up. playlists too Oh, they're great gym playlists. I think there's some that are a little bit more chill. I would definitely recommend New Jeans if you're on like the more chill vibes. But if you want some like hype shit, Dreamcatcher is really sick. Give them some love. Um, but yeah, also you can, you know, who else you can give some love? Everline. They're you know, <laughs> the same. Links below. You know, I'm, this is two. I'm not going to count all of them, but, but check them out. They're really sick. Two <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, the next question I have for you, Mac, is a fun one. If you guys could pick a song to cover, what would it be? Oh, so we already do have a cover song that we have in our current set list when we play live, um, which is Miracle by Churches. Wow. Yeah. What a pick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I need to hear somebody needs to get a live video of this so I can hear it because yeah. I'm imagining it, but like I need to hear it's it. Pretty cool. Okay, okay. But I think we've been trying to talk about a new cover um, and we really kind of verge on the the line of trying to do um, someone out of our genre. So like picking a song that's probably more of a pop song and doing like a pop goes punk sort thing oh, with yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I and got you. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of just swap it. Like I think we talked about maybe doing like Bad Blood or something from Taylor Swift and making that kind of um kind of in our style which okay. i think would be pretty epic i think it would be as well i i i feel like a lot of people cover that but i think your take on it you know mm. i think you guys could crush it i'm trying yeah. to think of a good pop song that i feel like you guys could rock with yeah mm. like i feel like toxic is so overdone everyone does it um, oh the britney spears yeah I think another one we talked about might have been like Dark Horse by Katy Perry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's another good I, one. Yeah, I I kind of like just the um I don't know, just like the chord progression for that one. Like it's so just like it just seems really dark and the lyric like the just the way she sings it, it's kind of it's a cool melody. It is a cool melody. I got to give Katy Perry some respect, you know. So, I I like that. I think I would go in a a different direction i feel like you guys could maybe do like a 90s like boy band kind of song i feel like maybe like an in sync or like a backstreet boys <laughs> like i think bye 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 
Oh, that would be a good one. <laughs> or I was thinking of everybody, like everybody. <laughs> yeah. I want the boys With all like, to wear the costumes, though. They need like a, to all wear their costumes. I would, yes. I feel like that's only <laughs> only necessary, you know. If, the, if that yeah. doesn't happen, then it shouldn't be done, you know. It was the um, point, yeah. I feel like the I feel like the your guitar player could definitely write like a more like progressive like kind of riff to it, you know. I need Just to start taking notes. I think that would be that would be my choice. I think you guys can That's rock like cool. a, a '90s like boy band hit, you know. I like it. Okay. I like it a lot. All right. Well, yeah. if you guys agree with me, or if you think I'm making a jo- dog shit take, or you want to give your own one. <laughs> let us know in the comments i can't guarantee i can't force mac and the band to do it but like you know i feel like if you if you ask politely if you say please you know maybe they'll consider it who knows maybe it's a good maybe it's a good answer you know i don't know use your judgment don't don't do (laughs) a dumb one you know i know you guys i know my fan base has a strong intellect so you guys pick a good one but you should you should also pick mine i'm just saying that would be kind of sick you know just <laughs> if I have to force my opinion on someone, yeah. You know. Um might as well be your fans. Might as well be my fans, you know. <laughs> I appreciate you. Love and respect as always. But the next question I have for you, Mac, is what is your favorite food to eat? I love potatoes. <laughs> just just <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> I like Sorry. how you just stopped and you're just like, when well, you know what? Actually, just potatoes. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I love like a baked potato with like butter, cheese, bacon, corn, a little bit of sour cream. My favorite. Corn Delicious. is an interesting choice. I don't know. I grew up always putting corn on my potato. It was just what you did. I'm going to have to try that now. I'm going to see if Pretty it's good. cap or not, you know. <laughs> I did. I can't. I can't. I, I've apparently been banned from saying uh, the what we have in America, a chicken Parmesan because uh, it's very divisive in the Australian community. So I'm just going to like, I'm just not, we're not going to talk about it because nah. I'm not trying to get into a heated debate. So yeah, I feel nah, like, Ma- I feel like Max, like, I feel like if I start to talk about it, Max going to take her jacket off and you know, I just definitely <laughs> well, don't. Yeah. She's just like <laughs> rips the shirt straight off mid mid interview, you know? Uh, so I definitely don't want that to happen. And I'm not trying to create animosity amongst we're here for music, you know, <laughs> and potatoes, apparently. So, I mean. You know what another heated debate in Australia is? Oh, no, why are you the, doing the this? Party, I... party, but you, you go, it's relevant to the potatoes. Okay, okay. So, in Victoria, we, here in, like, Melbourne, we have things, when you go to a fish and chip shop, you get potato cakes, which is just basically flat potato that's deep fried. It sounds and delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. In New South Wales or Sydney. They call them potato scallops. <laughs> They're potato cakes, not potato scallops. To be a fair, scallop is its own thing. <laughs> it's like a sea creature that you fry by itself. To be fair, in America we have scalloped potatoes, which is like potatoes in like uh like heavy cream, and it's like baked. It's got like yeah, cheese yeah, but on that's top. That's like that's how you like prepare them. They're scalloped, right? They're like, yeah, they're like, but they're like, they're like flat. Yeah, they're flat, but then they're like circular. Yeah, Yeah. I feel like that's different. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to, (laughs) I'm not for or against whatever name it is, but I feel like potato cakes sounds, I I feel like Mac has put me in a very tough spot because now I'm going to have to pick like a side. I'm not trying to do that. Just same with like the (laughs) the chicken parmesan, which I'm just going to say just, as an american i'm just not gonna we're not gonna delve into yeah. the naming convention you know whatever you don't want to get involved don't in want to get involved very, uh, and i'm not gonna get involved with in uh, yeah i feel <laughs> like i have started so much wars right now just <laughs> exclusively from that and now mac has added something else to the table for me to just again go to war at so i'm definitely not gonna pick a side um either way if you like it potato scallop cool if you like potato cake cool if you just like potatoes that's where you're at that's where you should be <laughs> potatoes are delicious team potato yeah, baby that's potatoes. what it is. that's my stance is team potato eat that shit all the time so <laughs> love potatoes shout outs to wherever potatoes were first found i don't know whatever I don't, i'm losing my mind here um <laughs> so <laughs> the next question i have for you mac 
is if you guys were to have a dream collaboration on an up-and-coming Everline song, who would you love to have on? To make the question a little bit more divisive, I want you to pick one where it's a little bit more feasible. You know, you you tug a little strings, you poke someone on the shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, you you shake someone. You're like, hey, listen, I like you, and you would sound good on one of my band's tracks. And then yeah. we also have to add the manifest. We have to like pick one that's like way out there. But you know, I believe in the power of manifestation. So like, you got to give us like the 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 ultimate answer. Mm. See, all right, my feasible one would probably something that we could potentially do, but we'd have to, like you said, really tug on someone's shoulder and be like, "Hey, hey, you, you know how you love us, and we're your favorites." <laughs> um, <laughs> So I love you guys. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> would be um for me it'd be Wind Waker. I'd love to do a collab with the guys from Wind Waker. And oh, because we tight. work with Chris, we can just be like, hey, you know how we're your favorite band, right? Right? Chris, where you at? Where are you, you at, Chris? We love you, Chris. Chris, Chris on. <laughs> You can clip that and send that to him. He's going to be like, who the fuck is this dude? Why do you call me Chris son? Don't yeah, ask questions, Chris. It's not important. He would love that. It's not important, Chris. We get you... sent photos of him all the time with like, you know, those like wet face masks that you just like put on your face. I love that. We're constantly That's getting awesome. sent photos of him with these like face masks on. Next, next interview with Mac, we're going we're gonna to plan to get his face mask so I can do the entire interview face mask. Like one of those... <laughs> like asian like face masks where we have like the, <laughs> the animals the animals or whatever you know the animal faces you didn't know it's that so cute. yeah have you seen no. those yeah they have no. uh, i'm gonna look it up while you give me your dream answer because i feel like i have to show you this it's, un <laughs> it's unlocked i feel like if we did face masks they'd start up here and by the end of it we'd have them like hanging down that's okay face. it'll Everyone be great co great content i think <laughs> i'd argue <laughs> um yeah uh i think i out there one i'd love to i think we'd love to collab with bring me the horizon that oh. would be incredible oh because i think we do take a lot of inspo from them but if we could do a collab with them that'd be amazing oh i would be so stoked all right guys listen this is Hell what yeah. I, this is what i want you to do we're now at the segment where you take your phone out and i need you to tag Everline on Instagram. First, I wouldn't need you to follow them because that'd be really sick and, you know, you'd be helping out the fam. So that's most important. Number two, I need you to both tag Wind Waker and Bring Me the Horizon. And then you type in the word collab question mark and then you <laughs> post it. And again, I have been on the internet and in interviewing bands for over seven years so you know i feel like i you know i have a little uh, you know i have a little say in what is going on in the internet sphere but i will say you know if it's on the internet shit might be real so i'm just saying i mean peer pressure does work i mean peer pressure does work you know <laughs> i mean listen like ed sheeran said he loves cradle of filth and who's gonna be on the next ed sheeran record cradle of filth so just saying I feel like he has a lot more influence than we do there. He is... might, but it's okay though. We're gonna totally believe in that that mentality, Mac. And then, you know, for for I don't know if I can get a good zoom in. Those are so cute. So next time, Mac and I are gonna do yep. <laughs> we'll have to coordinate it. My... So just be sitting here. My gonna roommates to, like, are gonna be like, yeah, my roommates are gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing? And like, don't worry about it. Don't ask questions. It's Who's all right. the chick with the panda that you're talking yeah. to? <laughs> <laughs> I have like the tiger one or whatever. I don't know. I'll pick an animal. It'd be great. Send if if you know creating beauty products want to send us face masks to try out on the next interview, that would be I'd be down for it. Shout outs. I don't know which brands. Yeah. Give us some brands in the comments. <laughs> but the next we'll question, Matt. Inf yeah, influencer. <laughs> Um, the next question I have for you, Mac, and this one, I know I have good faith. You're going to give me a great answer on this. Um, as most things, I'm a nerd about a lot of things, but video games more specifically, I'm a pretty big nerd about. So I have to ask, what video game character would you be? 
Oh no. <laughs> I knew as soon as you said the League of Legends thing in the, I was like, she's going to give me a good answer, I think. That's so hard. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Look, I play a couple of games. I wouldn't call myself like a real hardcore gamer, but like there's, there's probably like two that I'd pick. Do I get, do I get, can I get two choices? I'll give you two. I'll give you two choices. All right. My first ever, like, big video game that I got into was, like, Elder Scrolls Online. And I absolutely adore Queen Irene. She is amazing. (laughs) I'm guessing you weren't expecting that answer. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) What a great... Wow. I love Queen Irene. She's such a character. Okay, okay, okay. See, you you really lessened my... Because you were like, I'm not really a gamer. (laughs) <laughs> and then you I'm pull not. out this shit. No way. All right, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready for the next one. I'm ready to get my mind blown. Next one's probably have to be like a um a League of Legends character, but I need to think of like I'm trying to think of all the ones that I that I like and I like playing because I don't I don't play actual League of Legends. I mainly play like TFT, like Team Fight Tactics. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, because my partner plays. League of Legends, and he gets so angry, and I'm like, I don't want to play. <laughs> he kind of scared me of playing actual League, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, though, he gets so mad. Sometimes I just be sitting at the other end of the house, and all of a sudden I hear him just screaming, like, for God's sake, and he's just losing his mind, and I'm like, um, I'm going to go back to my movie. <laughs> that's a true That's a true gamer's heart, so I get that. Yeah. And then he'll come into the room and be like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just heard you scream for the past 15 minutes. <laughs> like really scream, not like that yeah. like bullshit scream, like screaming. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know. I really like um I really like Ari from League of Legends. She's a really cool character. I really like her backstory is kind of cool as well. Like I love the whole like Kitsune vibe that she's got going with the the Cat of Nine Tails, so I like, you got I some I good. Like you got some. You got some good answers. I mean, you really, <laughs> you really tried to like lower the bar here, but I think you really just you hit it right right on the head. So, I don't know what you were saying <laughs> about not being a gamer, and you brought out two very like not like not like I like Mario, which is I not bad. Uh, cr- no offense, I do love those games. <laughs> those are some of the classics, you know. Yeah. But what you really hit me with one that. Bro, I didn't expect you to say that. That's crazy. You know, like <laughs> I that's love all those girls. That's that's a move. I like that. Um, I feel like then I gotta follow that up with my entire desk is just filled with um Pokemon Funko Pops. So I feel like I gotta, you know, Ooh. mention my favorite, which is Dragonite, of course. Ah. I have more, but we would be here for like a very long amount of time <laughs> and I don't have that time right now. I've got as much as I would love to. Oh, the Piplup, little, yes. A little Piplup, and I've got, like, a little Pikachu terrarium on my desk. I love that. But, I've kind of got I've kind of yeah. got a similar thing, you know? I have Squirtle. Oh, thank you! <laughs> I got this, and shout-outs to um, Player's Choice in where my, close to where my parents live in South Carolina. They have, like, some of the coolest shit, and I always get blind boxes from them. Because they come from Japan, and I can't, I haven't been to Japan yet, so obviously that's, so cool. that's on the bucket list. But yeah, I get plenty of them, and then I also got this really cool shout outs to Kirby, another one of my favorites. Oh, you know, so cute! Big salutes. I love Pokemon. Pokemon, <laughs> if you want to collab with me, I would cry. I think I would actually like cry. <laughs> like a grown ass thirty year old would cry. So just saying, if you want to make a grown ass thirty year old cry. <laughs> slide into those dms um but <laughs> the next question i have for you mac <laughs> i yes it is funny all right i get it it's totally i i will die on the pokemon hill all right um <laughs> that's totally no, fine i have the no whole problem with that. For in between the boys were like we want to be the next league of legends world's theme song that was the whole preface <laughs> for writing the in between that's fair if, yeah. <laughs> so, I I I feel like I could hear it on a League of Legends. Like I definitely yeah. could. 
especially like since Lauren Babic was doing stuff with League, I believe. So I feel like that, you know, League, where are you at? We're going to tag you. Come on, let's go. Come on. It'd be really sick. We've got, your, we've got your world song for next year. Get us up. We got it. Slide into those DMs. You, you know, you're, you know, the, the joke, you're, you know, your, your people talk to my people, you know. <laughs> let's do it. We have Ophelia. That's all we have. That's all right. We got it. Me and Ophelia <laughs> will team up, you know, we'll do like the fucking like Dragon Ball Z fusion merge, you know, <laughs> merge into one person. Yeah. So <laughs> the ultimate PR person. Um, but anyway, the next question I have for you, Mac, is if you were to compile a dream tour lineup, including Everline, who would be on this tour? I'm going to let bands? you know that it is four bands, and that's in- not including you. So four, for four additional bands. Four additional groups. Oh, that's such a hard question. I thought you were going to ask me what my favorite Pokemon was. <laughs> I'll ask you that after now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought we were going with that. <laughs> no, we had, we do a one and done. That's the only, that's the only time I get to talk about my nerdism. That's it. Um, well, if we want to collab with Bring Me, we probably obviously want them on the lineup. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Um, look, I'm probably just going to bring on out all of the big guns of like the people we get wow. compared to because okay. they're just absolutely epic. Like, I'd love to play with Evanescence. That'd be incredible. I've obviously I've mentioned before that I've kind of like virtually met RJ. I want to meet Lizzie. I would love to play with Hailstorm. That'd be so cool. I don't know. Who else would I like to play? Maybe. I've just completely forgotten absolutely every game that I listen to. <laughs> We're at three, so you, you got a little bit. You got a little bit. Just like Spotify, and I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Go. Yeah, tell cool. me, phone, who do I listen to? <laughs> And she, she spits out and she's like Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> At least everyone that didn't get tickets will be able to come see Taylor Swift again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Rough. Um oh Muse. Oh I would love to play with Muse. Oh yes. I love yeah. that choice. Yeah, I love Muse. Oh man. Same. I don't think a lot of people know that. I, I'm a huge Muse fan. I love like the I love pretty much I did give a listen to the new album. I feel like I gotta give that more more love, but I basically stop at like a certain point where I like know all of their music catalog. Um I'm trying to think of I'm pulling up their album list here because I completely forgot where I stop at. Um I basically stopped after like second law. I think that's basically where my brain yeah. capped off. I absolutely love the resistance. I think that is that. And I think, I think basically everything from origin of symmetry and in between that up to the resistance is like gold standard. Muse so you, would you've heard like the simulation theory album or not? I have not. I, I should go and listen to that one. But which one? Uh, how, where where do you where do you lie, Mac? I feel like we have to figure out where you start and where <laughs> where I stop. <laughs> See, I like I, again. I grew up listening to like I knew Hysteria, I knew like super massive Black Hole, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I knew Butterflies and Hurricanes. But I knew only those songs growing up um, because that's what my parents listened to. So I grew oh, up with those okay, as well. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then I grew up with a really jaded opinion, which I don't know where I got it from. That Muse were overrated, and I ate my words when my partner took me to go see the simulation theory movie in IMAX, which is like the giant screens. The, I don't know. Do like, you guys have IMAX? Yes, we do have an IMAX. Yeah, cool, yeah. It's like cool. the, it's like <laughs> basically like the dome, different. the dome thing. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I got you. Yeah. So he took me to see like the simulation theory movie that they made, which is the live concert, but this done like in like a movie oh, sort sick. of set up. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and I saw that live and I was like, this, this man is a god. Like, <laughs> I was like, like, where did I get the opinion that these guys are overrated? This man is amazing. And not to mention the rest of the band. But Matt I was going to say, is, yeah. Oh, my God. Ooh. Their bass player is so wild. Like, some of oh. his bass riffs, I'm just like, I'm not even a bass player. But I just kind of want to learn. Mm-hmm. Like, I picked up a bass over quarantine. And I'm like, man, I need to learn some of his bass riffs because... 
they're gnarly. <laughs> yeah. So they're, I'm glad they're insane. I'm glad that you went back and 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 retracted your statement on uh, Matt Bellamy because he. I feel like he's always like severely underrated as like like I feel like if you're a muse stand like it's a you know you know kind of moment but like yeah. if you don't listen to muse then you're like yeah they kind of they're kind of mid and I'm like nah, no no they're not <laughs> you know I'm like have you listened to Knights of Sidonia I mean like come on that's a fucking insane song I mean obviously shouts shouts to the goaded Guitar Hero 3 one of my favorite games of all time um but i that's how i got into muse and then i went back and listened to like origin of symmetry absolution black holes and mm. revelations like that was when yeah. i really just like jumped in because i was like this band's doing wild shit that i've never heard before so sick yeah and his voice bro oh. love it i want to see them live like i don't know when the last time they toured in australia was but it would have been years ago so I'm hanging on, waiting for them to come back because I want to see them. Please, Muse, please. <laughs> I would love to see you at tour. Listen, let Muse. Me, let me if... play on the lineup, please. <laughs> Listen, Muse, all I'm saying is Muse, Everline, Australia, tour. Dream, I don't think I need to say I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I need to say anything else, honestly. If that actually yeah. happens. I will fly my you ass to Australia. I was going to say, if that happens, you better be there. Front I row. Hundred per- <laughs> front <Australia>. row. <laughs> I just flew like fucking like five. I don't even know how many miles you get to Australia. And then Max like, yeah, you got to be front row now too. <laughs> hey, hub, you got to do this shit. I know you interviewed us, but you got to pay up now. I'm I'm really upset now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Max, like, I got you. I'm going to put you in backstage. All right. It's all right. You believed it. You believed in me. Oh, my God. And then you start crying. Just start crying. Like, shout outs to Audio Addiction in the back. He's great. He's officially changed his name and become an Australian citizen. <laughs> That's actually his name. It's not a joke. <laughs> oh, my God. We call That's him so Brando funny. as a nickname. People do call me Brando. I, funnily enough, shout out to my man Max. He was the first. They were the first Australian band I ever had on the channel. Shouts to the the rest in peace, Vault of Valor, my 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 babies. Um, but I had bought. They were like, "Oh, we're just gonna send you a care package," and I was like, "You don't have to." I'm like, "That's that's amazing," but thank you though. And they put like a bunch of they put a bunch of Australian goodies like snacks. They put Tim Tams in there, and I've never, Ooh. like, I've never wanted to just, I am not a, a sweets person, but I can say with, like, so much assurity that Tim Tams are the best candy I've ever had in my entire life. Tim Tams are top quality. Unreal. Ugh. Wild. Like, even if you're not into, like, sweet things, everybody loves a Tim Tam. Like, it's, they're the it's like a drug. Best yeah it's so good <laughs> and they come in so many different flavors too he like gave me the chocolate food. he gave me the chocolate flavor that shit was on fire i was just like yeah i ate it and i was just like i'm why did he not send me more yeah. of these <laughs> so yeah, the BDOG I, ones they sent over oh they were great shout out to tim tams if you want to send mm-hmm. me a care package tim tams that'd be sick <laughs> yeah, I, would not, tim tams I would definitely not say no i would i would shit shit that would be amazing tim tams if you want to sponsor me i'd be so grateful <laughs> my roommates would be so stoked i would be stoked i would plug i would be like tim tam's best australian candy you can buy <laughs> and it's true it every is. else would be like yep yeah, love a tim big tam. facts um yep. i don't know what else he had he definitely sent me that i have like a koala that's holding an australian flag and then i also have uh, a matching shirt and shorts that i still have and i still wear so often because I like AS colors, big salutes. I know I'm doing oh, like, yeah, a lot yeah. of plugs right now, but like AS colors, man, psh, that shit's on another level. Yeah, like comfort we love wise. AS color. Yeah, you guys got the good shit over there. Tim Tams, mm-hmm. AS colors, Everline. I mean, great stuff. <laughs> so potato cakes, potato. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> 
I'm like, that's where I stop. <laughs> potato. J- they just have potatoes over in Australia, so that's it. Um, yeah. And chicken parmesan. They just have those two things over there. Just saying. All right, we're going to move on before I get beaten to death. Um, so <laughs> the next question I have for you, Mac, is, um, you know, you did talk about seeing – muse and how that was a life-changing experience for you um you know in a movie form but in terms of seeing a band live in concert who puts on a great live performance um oh i've seen quite a few bands now um i think my Really, actually, the best live performance that I've ever seen, I think it was my first ever concert when I was 15 years old, was wow. a, it was a Taylor Swift concert. And I'd never seen Taylor Swift before. I wasn't even really much of a fan of Taylor Swift at that You're point. You're not a Swifty? Oh, my God. I wasn't. Wow. I am now. <laughs> I wasn't then. <laughs> Until I saw that concert and I saw, like, the just the artistry that went into that. There was just so so much there's so many like moving parts there's props there's costume changes there's choreographed dances and stuff and I was like this is just epic this is so cool I think I'm a Taylor Swift fan now (laughs) (laughs) that was me with uh I went to go see a k-pop group called Tribe, and I like not that I didn't have respect for k-pop as a genre but like it like you just see like cute like chicks like dancing around and doing like yeah. dances and stuff and you're like you're like okay that's impressive but like like it's a little cheesy right and <laughs> then I went to go see them live and I was just like my jaw was like on the floor the entire time I'm like they're singing <laughs> and dancing and doing all this shit and then like part of the show was them like answering que- like fan questions like there's just so much like red carpet like rollout shit that they do like at shows that I'm like bro I that changed that. changed my mind about like K-pop as a whole like obviously on a much larger scale if you see like a big K-pop group it's probably a little bit different but I still think they incorporate those elements in but like seeing a type of show like that that's like 2 hours long and then putting a lot of effort into the 2 hours like it's insane. So big, big ups to K-pop, the K-pop community. Cause I like for thought for a long time, I'm like, you're going to hold this L until I like, until I'm like not feeling it. And now uh, L is a W, you know, it's a dub. So I'm, I'm, I'm really on the K-pop train right now and I'm mm. probably not going to stop. So I, it's like my, my version of being a Swifty, but yeah. not really though. Because <laughs> I would take Taylor Swift. My coworkers and I had uh, this comment that said, "If you could only listen to one person's discography for the rest of your life, would you choose MGK or Taylor Swift?" And I said, "No cap, hundred percent Taylor Swift." She has so much music to choose from. Oh like, yeah, there's there's how many albums has she got now? I don't She's know, like ten. <laughs> She doesn't stop writing. They just, no. She's perpetually writing. She's like, hey, I'm doing this tour, but I also have this new album that's coming out while I'm on tour, while I'm touring the album I just released. I'm like, how do you sleep? She doesn't <laughs> stop. She's an absolute gun. Like, geez. I, like, I feel like I don't sleep and I do a lot of shit. So I can only imagine <laughs> Taylor Swift is just like, all right, one hour power nap. Okay. All right. I'm fully rested, you know? <laughs> Let's like, bust out a new jam. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. I have to date someone first and then break up with them. And <laughs> write more material. Who's the next biggest male celebrity <laughs> that I can date and <laughs> traumatize with the song? And then have all the Swifties go after that person and be like, yeah, you, right? suck, <laughs> you suck, you suck, you yeah. suck. How do you do this to Taylor? I can't believe it. But now I'm going to get five more hour albums from Taylor Swift, so I'm stoked. She's going to make another couple billion dollars off of your off of her sadness and yours. God <laughs> bless, man. That's the goal. Man. That is my That's ultimate it. goal in life. <laughs> <laughs> sorry John. Wow, damn. My, my partner your, partner is like, like, your partner is going to be watching this part and be like, uh, <laughs> he's fine he just wants me to get rich and famous so that he can stay home and play league all day and he's fine with that he what a man care. of culture i <laughs> big ups that's big all ups. he wants out of life i he's, respect he's a simple that man that yeah that is that is a man of culture right there so big ups i love it i just want to yep. be i just want to be grown up and interview bands for the rest of my life so 
help me do that. That'd be sick. Um, I don't know who can help me, but that'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> the next question I have for you, Mac, is favorite TV show, favorite movie? Oh, God. Um, well, my favorite movie is the trilogy. Is that okay? I'll give you the pass. I've been giving a lot of people cool. the trilogy pass, you know, but cool. I'll do it. Lord of the Rings would have to be a favorite movie. Extended edition. Only the extended edition. Um, <laughs> Isn't that like 12 <laughs> hours long? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you best believe I have the bowl in DVD. So if I had come to if I had come to you and your partner's house and you're just like we're watching all of these, do I get like pee breaks? Am I like or am I just forced to sit here and watch <laughs> the entire movie? Like no you pausing. You've got your eyes open with two it's picks like, and you have to <laughs> It's a clockwork orange thing I have to like <laughs> Just sit back You're being indoctrinated this. into Lord uh, of the Rings. I mean, I have seen Lord of the Rings, and I've seen the extended edition, but I've also stopped to be like a normal human and eat, yeah, right. <laughs> eat and pee and do the normal things that humans do. Yeah, no, I think I get like one weekend, like every like four to five months where I'm like, I'm just going to sit down and watch the Lord of the Rings. That's what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> And people ask enjoy. you you're like what are you doing this weekend and it's just like yeah i'm just watching the director's cut of lord of the rings <laughs> and you're like all all weekend yeah all it's yeah. gonna take a weekend <laughs> yeah my partner will walk out and he'll be like again really again <laughs> and then you just go back to playing league and then you just hear him screaming in the background ah like yeah <laughs> and you like, think it's a part of the movie yeah Jordan? yeah <laughs> This is great. I love this. And then what's what's your favorite TV show, Mac? Really enjoyed The Witcher Ooh. recently. But if there's one show that I always go back to, it'd be like Avatar The Last Day Bender. <laughs> I feel like we're best friends now. Like We are. I think that's it. That's... <laughs> you just love all of my answers. I feel honored. Oh my god, that's such a great pick. <laughs> I love that show, and I love Legend of Korra. Salutes! It's like what, what a, what a TV show that you could watch as a kid and be like, "This is fucking sick," and this is, and then you can watch it now, mm -hmm. and you're like, "Man, like, this whoa. has so much meaning to it." This is the like life lessons, like deep right. interpersonal messages, like. Bro, such a good series. Uh, I wish, uh, you know, I hope they don't absolutely, like, butcher the, like, live adaptation of the show. Because I'll go back and watch the OG cartoon. Yeah, no cap. well, the uh, the movie that no one talks about is... They bet if they do that again, I think uh, there's going to be a witch hunt going on. <laughs> well, that's, like, the most current season of The Witcher where everybody... Where they, like, completely devoided themselves of source material, so... Yeah. Shout outs, Netflix. You're doing great. Love <laughs> <you>. <laughs> we love you guys. Do yeah, that I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe take video gaming seriously. I don't know. You know. Listen to Henry Cavill. He's played all the games. He knows what he's talking about. I just I, I want to go on a rant for a second because you did bring up Henry Cavill. I just want to say how fucked up he is because not only is A, good, very good looking man, B, has an accent c builds a pcs and is an actual nerd you know how high of a bar you have set for nerds as a whole mm -hmm. i'm pissed off i like <laughs> i i'm so mad like it makes me so mad because they're like are you like a nerd like henry cavill nerd and i'm like yeah <laughs> but i don't have nearly the nearly the good looks i don't have an accent and like <laughs> I've built my own PC. That's the only thing that I have to my name. And never Cavill took that. <laughs> so I love you, Henry Cavill, but also simultaneously, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. When I found out that he was like a real intense gamer and he built his own PC, and I was like, man, there's gonna be so many dudes out there. They're gonna hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's also, like I love you. I also just think it just makes it like hard for people that are in a relationship. You're like, oh man, like you're not gonna be as hot and as good looking and also a nerd as Henry Cavill. And I'm just Where's like, your British accent? Like you just just do better. Yeah. At least you at least I feel like your partner Jordan has a sta stance because like 
he probably built his own PC and he has an Australian accent. So like at least he's two <laughs> two out of the three, you know. Yeah, I don't know if he's good looking. He might also be. So okay. it's not so, as the novelty so is <laughs> I think Jordan's hotter, you know. I would say, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm feeling um, like I have to be a part of your relationship, but, you know, I'll, I'll also <laughs> say, you know, I'd also include that he's probably, you know, actually good looking as well. So, like, again, three for three, and I am, like, one out of the three. So, <laughs> I'm going to go. You've got with... an accent? Like, because I'm Australian, you technically have an accent. So, I mean. Don't, 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 don't. Uh, no, that's, this isn't. This... <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it, man. <laughs> I appreciate it giving me the giving me the raise but uh no nah, that's it i just feel like i have to feel bad about myself for like you know henry cavill you know the the love that i have to give to him you know <laughs> it just makes me really sad sometimes so that's all i'm gonna say that's my henry cavill rant um i'm probably this will probably be the last one i'm gonna make about him and the first <laughs> it was the first and the last rant so i appreciate mac for allowing me to just say my piece about henry cavill and also you know if he was a musician, then I would really just like be pissed off at that point. Pretty sure he does play guitar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Man, I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm I'm just gonna stop talking about Henry Cowell at this point. It's, <laughs> it's over with. Um, moving on. Moving on to the next question, Mac. Uh if you were trapped on a desert island for the next month and there was one album you could bring with you to listen to, what album would that be? I feel like a month's easier, you know? It's not too difficult. Yeah. I'm just trying to think, what albums do I enjoy, like, start to finish? And there's no, like, songs that you get to the middle and you're like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know how those albums, like, these are really good songs. Then you get to, like, some weird bits, like, filler songs in the middle and you're like, eh, they're okay. I they're feel like, that, okay. yeah, I, I agree with that, but I also, like, there's also albums where I'm just like front to back, just heat. Like there's just banger after banger where I'm like, this is good. This is good. I this, love this song. Yeah. This is an underrated sleeper. I like this song. You know, like there there are certainly albums that I feel like I could go through, you know, and run the town mm. with, you know. Yeah. See, I get bored really easily. So I feel like <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> I'd probably take an album that I'd constantly be like finding new things in it and that I don't know too well. I'd probably pick like some random dream theater album that I haven't heard because it'll always sound, there's always something new that you're going to find. You sit there and you can listen to it like 20 times and you can still be like, oh, I didn't realize that's a cool drum pattern. Oh, where did that sound come from? That's new. You know? And they also make songs that are like 15 minutes long. So I mean, like, right. <laughs> you'll be set. <laughs> You're like, are exactly. we listening to the same song? And you look at it and you're like, like, oh, mm, this is <laughs> wow. Where is the time going? At least, you know, I'm on a desert island, so I can not know the uh, concept the time. of time. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just I building like my little coconut hut and where I'm listening to Dream Theater on a deserted island. The, your, home, set up your, uh, your, your, home, <laughs> your home is built in seven eights, and, you know, like. <laughs> You start tapping on the, like, you start, like, making the house in, like, a rhythm. <laughs> Got 15 twelfths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for all my prog nerds out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out. I love you guys. Um, but uh, the last question I have for you, Mac, as much as, you know, we've had a best friend moment here, I feel like, throughout this entire interview. Um, I have been doing interviewing for uh, a little over seven and a half years, which makes me feel really old. But, you know, hey, I'm still here and I'm pretty gonna, epic. I'm thank you. Thank you. I'm going to look perpetually like a teenager. So it's OK. Um, but anyway, I want to know why music is important to you, why you're passionate about it, why you decided to create with Everline, because I think for me personally, I really love listening to music which is pretty evident i would imagine but mm -hmm. i think that i get a lot more love for groups and the reasons why they do it because then i like you know i get attached i get that investment you know it's it's such a cool thing to be a part of the scene and have that sort of love for it so what you know makes you do it obviously you know growing up in a musical family i feel like you didn't really have a choice but like what kind of <laughs> motivates you to continue to like be passionate about music and create stuff 
Well, I suppose, especially being a songwriter and looking after all the lyrics and stuff, um, I've never been a kind of person that's really comfortable with, like, talking about how I'm, like, feeling and, like, emotions and all of that sort of stuff. So I found music was a really good um, and really good outlet for me and a really I found it really easy to kind of shape how I feel about some things or what's going on in my life in a way that's more, I suppose, eloquently put in like lyrical style and it's put to a melody. And um, I've had with quite a few songs that we've written, I've had people that have come up to me um, and they've said, hey, I this song really helped me get through X, Y, Z that I was going through and I really, really connected with this song and um, uh, I suppose that it was kind of like a thank you for yeah. helping them get through it. And I think that was such... Having those moments is so humbling and it makes me just want to be able to keep going because if I can if I can reach people through my music and it can have any sort of good on them, any sort of effect on them um, positively, I think that's a really cool gift to be able to have and I it, I really would love to keep keep doing that and keep putting my music out there and be able to do what I can. Yeah, I think it's that ability to make your mark on someone else is like – really important i think that's kind of the reason i would say ultimately yeah. why i even started interviewing bands it's like i wanted a reason to give back to you know artists that really made an impact on my life so being able to kind of share and and you know share my uh love of music and finding other bands to connect new fans to i think that's like the biggest compliment for me is if i have an interview with anyone and they're like hey I really love this interview. I actually checked this group out and like now they're new, my new favorite band. Like that means a lot to me because a, like I feel like I get to be at the front lines of like finding out about new music, but also at the same point, it's like such a cool experience to know that like I've shared, you know, a project with someone else that now they really love and now they really are going to support. So to me, it's like a full circle moment. And, you know, I hope that, you really go give Everline some love because my God, if you've been sleeping under a rock, like I have, <laughs> it's time to get out from underneath that rock and probably burn up in the sunlight. But either way, it's, you're going to get out <laughs> from the rock. So I'm, I'm very excited. And obviously Mac can tell you where they, you can find out about Everline, what they have coming up next, all the cool shit that I don't know about. So now she's going to tell me. So what's going on, Mac? Yeah, so we've got you can find us on all of the all of the streaming platforms. We've like Spotify, Apple Music, a couple of music videos up on YouTube. So give those Ooh. some love. Um, most recent one for the in between has definitely been the most epic in in my opinion. We got some really cool. Uh, we ha got some cool dancers, which are friends of ours, to yeah. come and come Shout and push We've got a. Uh, we got burlesque dancer Cora Noir, who is absolutely stunning, and then we had Kim Yap, who was our fire dancer absolutely incredible so good at what you do so daring because i wouldn't go anywhere near the fire <laughs> personally i'd be too scared to burn myself but they have absolutely incredible and our feature artist rivalin oh all amazing people we got to work with such the coolest crew for this video so give it some love i agree go give it some love uh the literal term is it's fire because there was actual fire in it so there's actual fire yeah it's actually fire <laughs> But, like, actually, the song is fire, too. So go check yeah. that out and go give some love to Everline. I want to give a huge shout-out to Ophelia again. Um, just put in the, the Australia on, on my metaphorical map that I will inevitably put maybe in this spot here of all the bands I've interviewed over my, like, seven-and-a-half-year tenure of doing YouTube. So I'll just add another blotch to Australia. Eventually, eventually I'll come to Australia. That's my plan. So... Listen, Be sure my... when you come to Australia, let me know. I will. I have a kangaroo steak. Okay. <laughs> we, I, yeah. <laughs> I already said it at the beginning. So I, I'm a man of my word. So I feel like we have to have the kangaroo steak. But yeah, if any, you know, like, you know, any like festival or something want to, you know, sponsor me to come out there, I'm just saying that'd be kind of cool. And like, you know, I, I may have like a breakdown and cry a lot. And that would be great, you know. So just saying ophelia <laughs> excuse me sorry oh, something in my chest here but anyway Real classy. <laughs> yeah okay why not you know so she's got connections um 
But anyway, if you like this interview, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. It goes a long way. I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before the year's over with. And, you know, I'm at like 2,600. So, like, there's a little ways to go. But, like, you know, I think we're doing pretty, we're doing pretty well. So if you want to be a part of the fam, that would be amazing. Would love to have you. Um, again, if you haven't checked out Everline, I'll leave links in the description. Go Seriously, go give them some love. Go check out the new song, The In-Between. It's insane and, like, so thrilled that they're on the show. Uh, so please go show that song some love because it's really, really damn good. Uh, as well as that, go uh, give a follow to Mac on all of her social media uh, and then just tell her to do, you know, League of Legends shit or whatever. I don't know, <laughs> something. Let us know. But anyway, I'm huge thanks to Max. <laughs> just start. Just stream <laughs> now. Stream TFT. Yeah. You're like, hey, what's up, TFT? This is day five of <laughs> trying to reach out to D TFT to get our song on the next uh, League of Legends <laughs> song. So, hey, you know, I'll do it. Uh, but anyway, please go check out Everline. And huge thanks to Mac for coming on today to chat with me. Well, thanks so much for having me, Brandon.